All right, everybody, it's that time once again for Makeup Gourmet Live. Very exciting episode, the first in a series of many eyeshadow episodes. This episode really lays down the groundwork for all other eye makeup. So with no further ado, let's get started with Makeup Gourmet Live, Classic Contour Eyes. Let's go! <laughs> Yay and hooray and thank you for joining us today on Makeup Gourmet Live. Today's episode is Classic Contour Eyes, and this is a really good episode in terms of what you're going to really use almost every time you use eyeshadow as far as the anatomy of your eye. Once you figure out the anatomy of your eye, because it is an illusion how our eye is shaped because we're three-dimensional, so once you figure it out, you'll find you have such greater success, especially when you go into those darker shades, those higher contrast shades that really seem to be our nemesis when we try to do slightly more dramatic makeup, but we're going to fix that so it won't be any problem anymore. So just as a reminder, as we're getting started, live chat is live, so if you wish to uh, pop in and tell us what's on your mind, uh, have any questions about what we're doing, well by all means do, and we'll be happy to answer them. Every live chat participant is entered to win the product of the day, which we'll get to in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's just talk about what is a classic contour eye? Because that's a, that's a good question. Really, our eye creates a natural shadow already, just by the shape of the brow bone, and by the, uh, the shape of, our, of the ball of our eye, which tends to extend forward, so light and dark already sort of play on our eye automatically. So eye shadow is really just an extension of what happens naturally on our eye. And that's what we're going to work with today is what happens naturally on our eye. In upcoming episodes, we're going to extend that for a more for a bigger looking eye, for a slightly more dramatic eye. So as you can see in all these pictures I'm showing you right now, they all have, their makeup looks clean, it's together. Some look definitely more dramatic than others, but all the makeup is in the same place. It's, it's put into the right spot in the anatomy of the eye in order to support what is a classic contour eye. And so as I uh, demonstrate this look today, you'll be able to understand a little bit more clearly, but you can see how the color just caresses the brow bone perfectly. Uh, not, not too little, not too much. It really just seems to shape with the natural um, architecture and anatomy of the face. And that's what's really important to get to know. The, the only thing that really changes when you do your eye makeup uh, as far as when you're using the, well, really this look or any look, are the intensities of the colors that you use. So I'll be working with three colors today. And you can see uh, here's three colors right now. Now these three colors I've already applied to the model's uh, left eye. You see these colors are very close to each other in terms of intensity. Not a lot of contrast. So what happens is the eye looks shaped, but in a real natural way because the colors are very, very close to each other. So if you want a natural look, make sure you work with colors that are close to each other but at least have enough contrast to make a difference. Because if you try to go too natural, what happens is, what happens is you end up using too much of, a, of a, what you think is the darker color for contrast, but it's not dark enough so you just end up using too much. Uh, so the next shade I want to, the next uh, set I want to show you is what I'm going to work with today. So this set here is more of what I call a medium contrast. The only two colors that are different are the second and the third color uh, because they're they're uh, more opposite each other. You're going to see a lot more dynamic 
on the model's eye, but I'm not going to apply any more or any less than I did for the low contrast eye. All it really does is just make the shadows more prominent and the highlights obviously more prominent. And the last thing I want to show you is just a nice high contrast collection. So you can see here, these colors really vary greatly from each other as far as their intensity goes. From a medium light to a very dark to a very, very light shade. And those shades, again, will create high drama on the eye uh, because they're so far apart from each other. Now, of course, the only consideration to make is if you have a darker skin tone, you're not going to get that separation. Um, what you're going to get uh, really are colors that, again, look very close to each other. So with working with a dark, very dark skin tone, it, it's a much different story. And we'll get to that in a later episodes, how to do eyeshadow for a darker skin tone. Because that's, um, that's always, of course, very good. Uh, thing, uh, very good uh, things to know in terms of how do we work with contrast. Uh, so when we're working today, we're going to be working with really just three brushes. They're pretty simple. There's the deposit brush, which you see on the left-hand side of the screen, the uh, eye crease contour brush, really the brush that kind of does all the work, and then the bowler brush. I like the bowler brush. It does a lot of things. Um, not just how we're going to use it today. It, it, it'll come back uh, in uh, later episodes. So those are the three brushes we're going to use. And right now, what I'd like to do is introduce to you uh, the model of the day. Everybody, give a hand for Miss... Hold on, wait for it, wait for it. Miss Mary Jo Price, and there she is. Yay, so um, what we did with Mary Jo is on the left eye, who you turn your head towards me, um, we already did that first three set of shadows. So you can see her eyes are awesome in the sense that they're, they're made for this kind of look. She has a natural crease, and to enhance them is really easy. Um, if you have an Asian eye, trying to create a contour often is a, it's a little bit more labor-intensive, and again, that's something that you want to do some specific color coordination with that we'll work with in later episodes. So uh, go ahead and come back to center. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work with these medium contrast colors that I told you about. We're going to start with a, a nice kind of a light shimmery color on her eye, a higher contrast um, crease color, and then a neutral bone color and we'll be using those three brushes. So let's get started. The first thing you want to learn is the anatomy of the eye. So close your eye for me. So there's three parts to the eye as far as eyeshadow is concerned. Now, let me just say this. This is everything. When you are approaching your eye makeup, this rule never changes. And when you follow it, you can get away with anything with your eye makeup. If you don't, the makeup looks messy. So let me show you what those three things are. Where makeup goes. What, what are the parts of the eye? So I call this the ball of the eye right here. And that means every place I touch, there's an eyeball underneath. Right? Up here, I call this the bone. Okay, because every place I touch, there's a bone. Now, underneath the bone and above the eye, there's a little pocket. You can see how my brush kind of pushes in a little bit, right? So when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we look at Mary Jo, we see that her eye, um, open for us, we see that her eye has a nice almond shape. But that's an illusion because she is three-dimensional. So let me show you what I mean. Close again, please. So now if I take my brush and I poke it into the pocket of the crease, when I get out to the outer corner of her eye, if I keep following what appears like the shape of her eye, what I'm hitting right there is bone. And, and so that, that shape there, that sort of uh, almond shape, is, is an illusion. If I want to go underneath the bone, my brush has to go like this. So let me show you how, what that means. My brush is straight up and down. That means her eye socket, her eyeball, is really an absolute half circle. doesn't look like one because what happens is, because we're three-dimensional, our bones curve backwards and our skin wraps to our bone, thankfully. And so it gives the illusion of a more almond-shaped eye. But anatomically, she has um, a really a, a circle for an eye socket. In fact, the circle is 
a little bit taller than uh, than it is wide. So let me apply the eyeshadow now and and use that concept of where the uh, where the anatomy lies. So close your eye for me. So I'm starting with the deposit brush. Deposit brush rules, and I'll tell you why. When you use this technique and this brush, you get as you get the exact amount of makeup that you want, and it goes exactly where you want it to go. So I'm holding the brush more like a say like a microphone than like a pencil, and you see how I'm pressing on the ball of the eye. What I'm doing is I'm just laying down a layer of the eyeshadow, nice and smooth and even. Now I'm gonna get a little bit more. So what I'm doing is I look at it and I go. Uh, I want to see this color a little bit more. So now I'm going to press again. Yeah, just like that. But when I come out to this part of the eye, I don't go out here on the bone because that makes the eye makeup look messy. I make sure I stay uh, within the pocket of the crease. Again with a flat brush. I'm just building up. So this color is called Hugs and Kisses. And it has a real sort of light pinky shade to it. Now the second color I'm going to use is uh, the color, first I'm going to use what I call sort of the training color, but it's a color that's already on her left eye here. It's called Acorn Matte. Turn from me, away from me just a little bit. So what I want to do is I want to take my brush, I'm going to push it right in the pocket. See what I'm doing? Let me get my hand down so you can see that. With the tip of the brush, I'm pushing until I make sure my brush is under the bone and then I do what's a quarter circle. Where I stop is right where the pupil of her eye is. Do that again. And this goes on really quick. Why this is a good thing to do, even though you're going to be using ultimately a darker color, is it lays down the track of where this um, eyeshadow is going to go. Uh, as a makeup artist, you work with different people every day. So you really want to make sure you're capturing their anatomy. But even for yourself, if you're going to use a darker color, you're going to find that it's going to blend so much better if you lay down this sort of neutral shade. So this shade open for me. Oh, it's really pretty. So the shade we're using right now, it has a, it's like a cool shadow color. It's a cool neutral. Um, and that's what most shadows are. There's definitely, there uh, is no yellow in the, in the, sh in cool in shadows. Uh, no like yellow or red. Um, and so it looks very, very natural. So now I'm going to pick up the darker color, the brown matte. And I'm going to put it in the exact same spot. But as these eyeshadows get darker, what happens is it's like um, tomato paste. They get more concentrated. So you'll see that I'm not going in as far as I did before. I'm just going in about, a, about an eighth of a circle, really. And once I get that color established, now I'm going to keep the tip of the brush in the crease of the eye, and now I'm going to massage it. And I think of blending as massaging. What you're really doing is you're relaxing that eyeshadow. Relax it until it just um, let, lets go. And then it just kind of sighs, and it spreads out evenly on both sides of the crease of the eye. You'll see when I get out to the corner of the eye, my brush actually wraps in and it touches the top uh, outer corner of her eyelid on top. That's just to make sure this color wraps on the bone and doesn't go out here. We call that shadow squirt. And when you see that, it's really distracting. Open for me. Because, because what happens is we, because it's not part of the shape of the face, it sticks out. Now, if you do a really dramatic look, you can go there. But if you're doing like this look, which is more of a balanced look, um, it, it, look, it ends up just looking messy, like you just missed. Close again. I'm going to make this a little bit darker. So you'll notice that I'm using just the tip of the brush when I go in. I'm not holding the brush like this. I really want to make sure that placement of that color is right in the pocket and no place else. Because if you get dark spread out on more of the lid, you miss all the contrast of the light color here to the dark color in the crease. So just be uh, very specific and uh, very repetitive. I'm going to blend this just a little bit more. So you see I'm just massaging, trying to relax the color until it sighs. It'll just relax. You'll see it when it happens. Then the last color is, or last brush, 
is called Bullet Brush. Now this is an awesome little tool, little fine tip. There's so many little things you can do in terms of, you know, placing uh, extra colors on the eye when you're creating more dramatic looks. So that's called the Bullet Brush, and it's very, very cool. So with this brush, I'm going to use my uh, French Vanilla Matte, which is lighter than the color I have on Mary Jo's eye here. Now what I'm going to do, this is I put the color on the side of the brush. See, I'm rolling the brush. The color is really on the side of the brush. And I'm going to use that deposit technique again to apply it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right under the eyebrow. And I'm going to press. See how it's going right under the eyebrow? Start high. So what it does, it cleans up uh, whatever work we did on the eyebrow. And then slowly come down and let this color just kiss, just barely meet that medium uh, contour color. And here, you can use this sort of as sort of a shaper, meaning if you feel like you kind of got the, the contour color too high somewhere, you can just kind of go over it with this and it'll help it blend. So I use the side of the brush to apply, but now the very tip of the brush, I'm going to uh, blur. I like to just think of it as blurring. These two colors are closer to each other, so they're pretty easy to blur. And really, you just want the whole gradation to be seamless as you work on the eye area. Mmm, looks really good. Blends so nice and easy. Open for me. And then could you lean just closer and look right up here into the little green light? And then turn a little bit left to right. So you can see that side, definitely higher contrast shadow. And then on the other side, the side we did originally, uh, we just stop with the first color and then come back to center. And you can lean back. Um, and then, the, but then the uh, but the first color looks is more natural. It's a little bit lighter than the the uh, the intensity of the iris of her eye. Whereas on this side, this intensity here is closer to the intensity of her iris, and so it's it creates what we, what I like to call a balanced look, where the intensity of the colors are equal to um, the natural coloring of the person wearing it. When you're blonde and you have really fair skin and light blue eyes, makeup really takes off on you. It takes very little intensity to create contrast. As your skin tone gets darker, uh, that's when you, um, you need to work with much lighter and lower and deeper intensity colors to create the same effect. So this is Cetaphil, and I just put the Cetaphil on the tip of a, of a cotton swab, I'm taking off the excess, because you don't want this thing drippy. And, I'm, and along this line here, meaning from the nose past the corner of the eye, I'm just going to clean up anything that came too far out. So when I do, I'm, and there's a ton on this little swab. Let me get it close. See all that? You don't see it under her eye, but because it's like dust. But if she were to start doing her like concealer, foundation now, she'd be really pissed because it's just going to like show up in, in a big way. So just clean it up real quick. So two things happen. You get all that excess stuff off the eye, but you also trim up the shape of the eye so the eye looks even that much more clean, which is really what you want, a nice crisp looking eye. So I'm not going to go into any more eye makeup. Of course, this is the foundation. When you're doing eye makeup, learn this, because what you're learning is the anatomy of your eye. Once you really can figure out how to get those colors in the right spot, then you can use any color palette you want, any intensity variation you want, because you're putting the makeup in the right place. The second it gets in the wrong place, you know it. You look at it and you go, oh man, I blew it. My makeup just doesn't look right. Um, so master the classic contour eye, and then, well, I'll tell you what, you'll be able to do almost this look and all the other looks I'm going to be showing you um, as, this, as this sort of segment of these shows progresses. So the feature product today, meaning, let me check my live chat here. Um, oops, I hear myself talking. Uh, we have a uh, looking good MJ from uh, one of our viewers. So thank you, kind viewer, for uh, for 
uh, checking in with us on live chat. And I was just going to mention that, uh, so today's featured product is the Eye Crease Contour Brush. That's the second brush that I used uh, on our model today, Mary Jo, to create that depth in the crease of the eye. So some lucky live chat um, participant is going to get that color, uh, going to get that brush today. Uh, so if you have, please just chime in, just tell us your name, whatever, and where, and where you're from, and, uh, and you'll be entered uh, to win that. And that's very, very exciting. Um, also, let me move on down here. For all of you, um, I do, for my viewers, I do a live special 20% cart discount. Now, what's cool about the cart discount is um, you, uh, you use this code here that you can only get by watching this episode, MUGLIVE18. M as in Mary, U-G-L-I-V-E, 1-8. Because this is a season one, episode eight. So that's what the uh, 18 represents. So fill up your cart between now and next week's show and enter this coupon code and you're going to get 20% off the entire cart. Uh, the only thing that uh, this uh, discount code does not work for are my value bundles and my sale items. And they're usually one and the same. Uh, those bundles are, are already discounted more than 20%, so you get a savings if perhaps any of those value bundles sort of fits what your uh, current needs are as far as what products um, you might be needing. Um, so um, when you go to Makeup Gourmet Live, or you go to Makeup Gourmet, we, we have um, a ton of product. Let me show you what we have here. Um, when I started doing this brand, you know, my client said to me as I was teaching the makeup, well, where do I get this makeup? And I was writing lists of places for them to go. You always get this from this person, from this brand, and this from that brand. And I realized it's just a wild goose chase. So I developed my brand, my colors, all based on my system of applying makeup, which is called Face with a Heart. Um, and I really lucked out in terms of the company that I partnered with. Um, they're close to me. They're like 20 miles away from the studio. So it's a very low carbon footprint, all made in the USA, which is really great for local economy. I have, so I have skincare for both women and men. Uh, and men, you can use the women's skincare and vice versa. Uh, it's just the packaging is different, really. Um, I have a complete color line. Whatever you're looking for, eyeliner, mascara, mascara, I forgot to show you the mascara trick. Next episode, I'm going to feature the uh, Bambi mascara trick, so you have to come back next week to see that. But anyway, I have all the color, great brushes, the ones I showed you today. All the brushes I showed you today are $12 each, so they're very affordable, they're very durable, you can clean the heck out of them, and they're going to work just fine. For a long time. I also carry supplies like uh, brush cleaner, uh, disposable lip brushes and mascara wands, all those good things. And it's all available online at MakeupGourmet.com. So have a look around. I also, uh, on my website, tons of tutorial videos with um, the, the suggested product that I use in each video below them. And they're really just what you want to follow up with in terms of what I did today. Uh, because you're like, wait, what's that deposit brush? What is it? What's the ball of the eye? It's all, I have so many videos called Classic Contour Eyes. Just go there, watch that, and you are so good to go. Now, if there's something that you want to know more about with Makeup Gourmet, is in terms of, I can't figure out how to, you know, put on my mascara, or my concealer never, never seems to blend enough into my skin, um, send me those um, topic ideas to info at makeupgourmet.com. I'm more than happy and willing to uh, look at your suggestions and use them for um, our purposes as far as what we want to share with the rest of the viewers. Because your concerns is usually everybody else's concern. So knowing that, um, you know, no idea is too small as far as... Um, what would make a good episode topic? Um, if you're if you're thinking, well, geez, that's all really good stuff. How do I 
you know, how can I learn more besides using the videos? The best way is go to Amazon and type in Face with a Heart. You'll get my book. Um, this, in fact, was it today? Yeah, today it was sitting uh, at number three in Amazon Cosmetics uh, books as far as bestsellers go. And uh, book number one and book number two were two different books by Kevin O'Quan, who we really respect because he is a great makeup artist. And he really wanted to help everyone sort of demystify, you know, ooh, makeup, glamorous, that's for the makeup artist. Well, it is for us, but it's also um, for some of us to share. So anyway, it's sitting at number three today, and my book is three years old this month. Um, oh, actually, I lie, because it's August 1st. So last month, is I, I launched my book in July, and... So it's three years old, and that's really cool to be sitting at number three on Amazon, which has a lot of books, behind you know two Kevin O'Quan titles. So everything I'm sharing with you and so much more, it's all in there. Um, so take if you're really interested in learning more, it's an easy read. Um, it's really a pretty book in the interior, and, and you'll learn a ton. So um, I suggest that you look at that if you want to learn more. Uh, so I think that's about it, except if you are interested yourself in being a model, especially if you have a makeup challenge. Like next week, I have a makeup challenge uh, model that I'll be using. But uh, you can also be a model on the show. You get free product for being on the show. And it's a good, I like to use quote unquote real people. It's not that anybody isn't real. Um, but models just behave differently in front of a camera than normal folk. Um, and it's good, you really want to be able to relate to who you're seeing the makeup go on to. Um, and so that's why I like to use, uh, you know, friends, family, and, and all that as my models because it's just, it's a nicer vibe. Um, and so and speaking of, uh, of next week, one second, let me get there. Um... One second. There we go. Next week, the makeup challenge that I have is I really sort of um, broke it down to smoky eyes. She has a really light hair, light skin, light eye color. And she said, you know, I just any makeup I use on me just really jumps off my face. Like I mentioned with today's model, because the contrast is so high, you have to be so careful with what you're using. Um... But the one thing I want to say about that is that um, learning again today where where color goes and doesn't go, it really helps you to not make those mistakes. But so anyway, her her biggest concern was I, I can't do smoky eyes to save my life. I put them on and I just look hideous. So we are going to meet that challenge next week and see if we can't do a smoky eye that Miranda likes. That's next week's model. And so that's very exciting. And so uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in to today's episode. I really appreciate you uh, seeing what we're doing. Of course, if you missed the live episode, everything is available on uh, YouTube in about an hour. It'll be recorded, and you can watch uh, the entire episode. And we're going to exit with music uh, from Joe Crown, because Joe Crown is awesome, a great uh, New Orleans artist. And I always thank him for letting me use his music because I love it. And so, uh, everybody, uh, thank you for, for tuning in and being here today. One second, I'm trying to get his music to come up. There it is. One second. We got the wrong song. Okay, you just have to hear this song. So, before we say goodbye, let me go back. Here it is. And that's it. See, season 1, Episode 8. Classic Contour Eyes. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Yoo-hoo! Joe Crown Organ Combo, joecrown.com.